Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. I will bless the Lord. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We thank you for joining us this morning and we pray that you will join. Click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture this morning will come from Psalm 91 verses 1 through 2 and then 9 through 16. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. Verse 9 says, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. My brother, Pastor Bartholomew Orr of the Brown Baptist Church in South Haven, Mississippi, sends out a devotional blog every day. And in one of his devotionals this week, he stated, and I quote, God sees everyone. God is concerned about everything. This year of 2020, with all its pandemics, its pandemic and problems, have caused many to ask, where is God? Why is God allowing this to happen? He goes on to say, today, trust God even when you can't track where he is, what he is doing, or even why he's doing it. God hasn't changed. God hasn't moved. God is still on the throne. This devotional really spoke volumes to me because sometimes we don't know what God is doing and we don't know why God is doing it. But the Bible says that we have to trust God. We have to trust God in everything. And then there's another scripture that says that I read somewhere in the Bible that says, God has you on the best plan for your life. So we have to trust God. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Our song is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take Thus says the Lord, 
Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to see another day that we can honor you and praise you and worship you, Father. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us, Father God, to have the ability to lift our hands and praise you, to raise our voices and just say thank you. Lord, we thank you for keeping us and enclosing us in our right mind. Now, Father God, we ask you to bless us now. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us, Father God, for bad lifestyles and bad commitments. Now, Father God, we ask you to bless us through your word. Share with us your word, that your word will fall on good soil, that lives will be changed, hope will be renewed, strength will be gained, that families, Father God, will be kept together in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, and I ask it all. Amen and thank God. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, yes, Jesus, how I, how I trust him. his name. Yes, thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank the Lord for Jesus. Thank him for Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. God for Jesus. We're at the end of Matthew chapter 24 today. Matthew chapter 24 in the New Testament. The book is St. Matthew chapter 24. The verses are 45 through 51. Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 through 51. We will come to a conclusion to Matthew chapter 24 on today. In the New Testament, Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 through 51 is where we will finish out this chapter today. Amen. When you found it, you will discover these words. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat up his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards to the master of the servant will the master of the servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of. And will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want to ask the question today. Which servant are you? Which servant are you? <laughs> the question on the table today is which servant which servant are you? This particular pericope pulls away from and pull aside from the rest of Matthew chapter 24. From verses 1 through 44, Jesus and Matthew lets us know that there will be perilous times that will take place on planet Earth. He talks about, from verses 1 all the way to verse number 44, he talks about the end times. He talks about when the world will come to an end. He, he talks about how we will come to a point in this life where the church will be raptured up. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. those who have confessed him as their Lord and Savior, the church 
without a spot or a wrinkle, the church that is living for the Lord, the church who has trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, every individual will be raptured up and taken out of here in the coming of Jesus Christ. He is, he is very, he is very intentional when he says to us, the church of Jesus Christ, the church, those of us who are saved, at the trump of God will catch a flight out of here. And the Bible says, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, we will forever be with the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, Paul says to us, I have you not to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, those who had this lively hope, those who died trusting Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. Don't be ignorant and cry and moan and have sorrow as some who have no hope. He says that we have hope in our foreparents, our friends, and our families who have gotten out of here, who have fallen asleep, who has died in Christ with this lively hope, we ought to know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is going to crack the sky. Yes, yes. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul says, at the trump of God, at the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> And those of us who remain will be caught up with them in midair, and we will forever be with the Lord. Paul closes that particular chapter out by saying, comfort one another with these words. It ought to be a great comfort to you today if you're saved. If you're born again, it ought to be a great comfort to you to know that you're going to a place where there's no more crying, no more dying, no more suffering, no more sickness, no more abuse. The church of Jesus Christ will be raptured out of here, will be caught up. The word rapture is not mentioned in the Bible, but it is the great catching away that caught up of this church will be caught up in midair. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. Yes. That's good news. Yes, it is. That's great news because we don't deserve to go to heaven. We, we have not done anything to make it to heaven. It's only because of what Jesus did on Calvary <clears throat> That's right. over 2,000 years ago when he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. Only thing we have to do is believe the story. Yes. And trust that story to get us from earth to glory. And we'll say we're born again the moment we trust that story. I submit to you today, if you have not trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, today is a mighty good day to get it right with God. But he also talks about in Matthew <laughs> chapter 24, that there will be some who are left behind. There will be some that won't be on this flight. <laughs> This life flight. There will be some that will not be in the book of life. Yes. They will be left to deal with the great, great tribulation that will bombard them. I know we're going through a pandemic. I know we're going through famine where people are in long lines <clears throat> to get food. I, I understand that people are suffering from illnesses and many and every family have died. And some families, whole families have been wiped out. Through this pandemic, I understand that we are going through great hardship today, but Matthew says this is just the beginning of sorrow. Oh, Matthew declares in Matthew chapter 24 that we need to understand that if you miss the flight for Jesus Christ, if you miss the flight with Jesus Christ, you're going to have to go through what is known as a great tribulation. And there will be wars and rumors of wars. And there, there will be earthquake in various places. And, and there will be pestilence throughout this land. There, there will be nations against every nation. There will be family members turning against family members. He says this is the beginning of sorrows. Yes. He says the earth will not, the world will not come to an end until the gospel is preached throughout the whole world. He goes further to say to us in the first few verses of Matthew chapter 24, he says to us that, that they will, there will be a time where false Christs will rise up. Yeah. 
there will be men that will rise up and say that they are the Christ. Mm. They are the ones that you need to look up to. They are the Messiah. They are the anointed one. God needs to deliver us today from false prophets that will say that they are the prophets of God. And if you come and pack this Colosseum out and send me some money, then you will be born again. Let me just share with you, the only new birth experience takes place is when you honor Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection on the cross. He died on the cross, and he rose from the dead. Let me just share with you today, there will be false prophets that will rise up, and they will do great miracles. Don't get excited, because men do great miracles. Don't get excited because men do these amazing things. The Bible predicts that even the false prophets, even those who are false Christs, they will come and they will do great exploits. They will dazzle you. They will amaze you. They will make you think that they are real because they can do such great things. They will come and they will say, look, he's over in the desert. The Bible says don't go look for him. They will come and they will say, oh, he's in the inner room. And people will run to the inner room to see Christ. And it will be a false Christ. Wow. Let me just tell you that, that Jesus left here on a cloud. Jesus is coming back on a cloud. So no man, no man on planet Earth who rides in a limousine can, can pronounce that he's coming back in a limousine. He's not coming back in a GMC. He's not coming back in a Jaguar. He's coming back on a cloud. Yes. And this same Jesus that left on the cloud will return on the cloud and he will rapture up the church. Those who died in Christ, those who believe the story, he will rapture those who died in Christ first. Yes. And those of us who still remain walking around on planet earth, we will be caught up with him in mid -air. He goes on to say that no man knows the hour, no man knows the day, no man knows the time which Jesus will come back. There will be two men that will be working in the field. One will be taken and the other one will, will be left. There will be two, two women that will be grinding at the meal. One will be taken and the other one will be left. Jesus is coming back like a thief in the night. The author asked the question, if a man knew that his house was going to be burglarized, if he knew that the thief was showing up, would he not prepare for the thief? Oh, yeah. Let me just share with you today, we ought to be preparing because Jesus is coming back. Amen. Amen. And the best way for you to prepare today is be born again. Yes. And being born again is not running, jumping, shouting, speaking in other tongues, not even rolling on the floor. But what you must do is repentantly believe. I said repentantly believe that Jesus is the son of God. Yes. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. Amen. We must repent of our sins because judgment is coming. We will be judged. We will be judged of the things we've done in this life. And that leads us to verse number 45. He takes a turn here. He no longer talks about the end time tribulation. He takes a turn and he starts talking directly to those of us who are servants of the Most High God. Look at what he says. The question on the table today is, which servant are you? Right. Which servant are you? He describes two servants. He talks about a faithful servant. Hmm. And he talks about an unfaithful servant. He talks about a faithful servant. And when he talks about a faithful servant, he gives some characteristics of that servant. And then he talks about an unfaithful service and servant. And he gives characteristics of that servant. First of all, let's look at the faithful servant because I know everybody that, um, that, are, that are listening to me, every person that is listening to me, every single person wants to be a faithful servant. Amen. Every person ought to live their lives faithfully unto the Lord. Amen. Every person who is saved ought to look forward to living and walking in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 45. He says, who then is a faithful and wise servant? 
First of all, this servant ought to be faithful. <laughs> he ought to be faithful to the Lord. I'm not talking about faithful to your Twitter account. I'm talking about faithful to the Lord. I'm not talking about faithful to the, the antiquities of email. I'm talking about faithful to the Lord. He says, who then is a faithful servant? Someone who is faithful. Number one, the key word here, the root word here is faith. So if you have a root word, then the root word of faithfulness or faithful, the root word here has to be the word that speaks clearly to you. The root word is faith. Therefore, we must have faith. This word faith is the Greek word pistis. And this word pistis means to rely on, to depend on, to put your security in. If we're going to have security, if we're going to put our faith in anything, we need to put our faith in God. Amen. The president can't help us. Matter of fact, the president won't help us. We have to put our faith in God. Amen. The governor is choosing side, so we can't put our faith in the governor. The, the mayor, the mayor and the county judge are limited by the governor and the president, so we can't put our faith in the county judge nor the mayor. We have to depend on God and God alone. My, my question to you today, which servant are you? Now, the faithful servant is, a, is the one who trusts God in the good times and the bad times. Right. He is. He is one who, who's going to trust God regardless of what men say. Regardless of what the pandemic does, I'm going to trust God. Regardless of how many family members I have that, is sick, that are sick, I'm going to trust God. Regardless, if I'm sick myself, I have to put my faith, my reliance, I have to put my confidence in God and God alone. Yes. The faithful servant, number one, has faith in God. Mm -hmm. And when you take this root word faith and you look at it even deeper, th this faithfulness means that he's working. <laughs> Not only do I, I put my faith in him, not only do I rely on him, not only do I, I'm totally supported by what I believe in him, I'm also willing to work for him. Look at what he says. He says, who then is a faithful and wise servant? If you are a faithful servant, you're going to be on the job. It's a bad, it's a sad day. It's a sad day. It's a sad day when we have people in positions that refuse to be faithful. It's a sad summation, even in the Lord's house, if we have people who are, who are scheduled to work and not their own time. Right. It's a sad summation when we get to a point in our lives where, where we have to depend on people that we got to wonder about. <laughs> what if your employer have to wonder every day if you're going to show up? Right. What if your employer would have to think, well, you know, today is Wednesday. Are they going to show up today? Well, today is Friday. Are they going to call in sick today? Well, and when they do show up, are they going to show up before time or on time? Right. Are they going to show up late? Mm. The faithful servant always looked forward to having faith in God, and then he looked forward to working for the Lord, and he looks forward to being faithful in his work. Not only is he faithful in his work, he's on time for work. Now, most jobs, on most jobs, on most, on most jobs, my brothers and sisters, you can keep the job if you do two things well. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we sometimes don't, don't measure up on getting everything right on the job. But if you show up in your own time, you can usually keep the job. Right. You know, somebody, somebody just needs to know that you're faithful when you show up. And you're faithful when you're on time. People ought not be looking for you. People ought not be trying to find you. You ought to be faithful to the Lord. I know we're not in the church building nowadays, and, and therefore we're not monitoring who comes in and who comes out. We're not seeing who comes in at what time. But let me share with you, some folk uh, have developed an unfaithful attitude until they don't even show up on the screaming on time. Because a double-minded man is unfaithful, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his or her ways. So you ought to want to be a faithful yes. servant. You ought to want to be a, a faithful servant. So this word faithful means that, that you're going to have faith in God. Yes. 
And you're going to be faithful to your doing, faithful to the work, faithful to the position. And you're going to be on time and you're going to show up every time. You ought to show up every time. God deliver me from folk that because they got sick days, they just take them. They just run through them. They just run through them. And then when they get to the six months, they have not one left. But a faithful servant is not only just faithful, but a faithful servant is a wise servant. Look at the text. The text says that he's a wise servant. It means he doesn't do things haphazardly. It means he prepares for the future. Yes. The wise servant knows that the rainy days are coming. Old folk back home used to say this, say this, save something up for rainy days. Sister Hopkins used to tell me, the late Sister Hopkins used to tell me, boy, whatever you do, go get you a croaker sack full of beans and peas. Get your croaker sack because there are going to be some times that you won't be able to get food and you can always cook greens and beans. And the beans and the greens and the peas will supply you with the right proteins that you need. Yes. She says, be wise. Prepare for the future. Things may be going well for you now, but things going to get hard. She says, be wise. Whatever you do, be wise. Make sure you prepare for the future. I say to young people all the time, go ahead and get your education while you're young because when you get your education, they can't take it from you. That's right. Don't wait till you grow super old and then you want to go back to school and get something. You can do it, and those of you who are doing it, God bless you, it's a good time to do it. Any time is a good time to get your education, but you ought to be preparing while you're young. That's right. Don't stop. <laughs> Keep going. Keep participating. So the faithful one is not only faithful, but he or she is wise. Mm -hmm. Then there's that word servant. It's word servant meaning that we have a God that we answer to. Mm -hmm. This word servant means that, that we have somebody that we look up to. The word servant is another word for steward, and we are stewards over what God has given us. We don't own anything. Right. The car you got paid off, it belongs to God. Therefore, you ought to pick up folk on your way to church in God's car. The house you have, every now and then you ought to share it with somebody else because it belongs to God. We are just servants. Right. We are just stewards. We have been entrusted with God's very best. We have what we have because of God. We, we do what we do because of God. We are just servants, stewards, that we are just those who manage God's stuff. Right. Whenever you get to a point where you conclude that it's your stuff and you pull yourself up by your own boot snap, boot snap you are headed for failure right. because everything that you have belongs to the Lord. Scientists will tell you that energy cannot be created, nor can energy be destroyed. It's just changed from one form to the other. What it's saying is God put everything here, and when man makes inventions, he's just changing God's stuff that God has placed here from one form to the other. That's right. All of it belongs to God. Men think they're making great discoveries of land. God put the land here. It's not a discovery when it comes to God. Men think that they are, they are creating great things and they are inventing things. Let me tell you, whatever you invent, it belongs to God. And whatever you see, it already belongs to God. We are just stewards over what God has given to us to manage it. Amen. And we ought to be faithful and wise managers. Faithful and wise stewards. He says, he says, verse, 40, verse 45 Matthew chapter 24, who then is a faithful and wise steward whom his master has made ruler over his household? God, Jesus tells this story about a master who goes on a far journey. And when he left, he left his stewards. He left a slave over other slaves. Look at the text. The text declares that this is just a servant. It's just a steward that's hanging out with other stewards. It's a master that has placed 
other slaves over other slaves. God has given us a position. And because God has given us a position, we ought to consider that position a privilege. God has given us position. He's given us stuff. He has made us managers. He has made us stewards. And then he, he says, who, who, is, who master has given him rule over his household? God has given us rule, not only on, over our household, but over this whole world. That's why we have to make sure that we don't contaminate the world. We, we have to make sure that we act in good stewards, as good stewards over what God has given us. We have to make sure that we treat other folk right. Look at what he says in the text. He places him, he places this slave over the whole household while he's gone. And while he places this steward, this slave, this servant over the whole household, his job, his position, his, his, his protection is to take care of the rest of the slaves. Look at what it, it says. It says to to give them food in due season. His job, his, he, he has a privilege. It's a privilege to be named somebody. It's a privilege to be called a servant. person said to me the other day, you're going to have to call me pastor one day. And I said to him that I, I doubt it because the greatest thing that you can be called is a servant. Your titles mean nothing if you're not serving. That's, right. That's why we don't have presidents at our church. We don't have uh, coordinators at our church. We don't have directors at our church. We don't, we, don't, we don't have vice presidents at our church. We have servant leaders. Amen. Because every leader ought to lead in serving. And our servant leaders ought to serve the Lord in the presence of those who follow them. They ought to serve the Lord well. And they ought to serve the Lord consistently. And we ought to be doing what the Lord has called for us to do. At the text, the text says, he gives them food. This servant that God has left in control. This servant that God has left in charge. This servant that God has given the privilege of doing things well. He gives others food. And he divides it wisely. And he divides it well. And he divides it without any recourse of making them promise him he going to do something. They're going to do something for him. Wow. He's a wise steward. He's a, he's a wise servant to give food to them. And he does it in due season. The question is asked, who is this servant who will give food to them in due season? You ought to be that servant. Mm -hmm. The Sunday school lesson today talked about uh, not being partial, not being carrying an attitude of favoritism. Right. You ought to make sure that you treat people well. Right. I understand you can't treat everybody the same because everybody is not the same, but you can treat everybody right. It, it doesn't matter who they are, whether they're related to you or not. You need to understand we must treat people right. The text declares that this servant, this faithful servant, this wise servant, treat people well. He, he blesses them with food in the due season. Who is this servant? Verse 46 says, blessed is that servant whose, whom his master, when he comes, will find him doing. I want to tell you the day the master is coming back again. And when the master shows up, the question today, will he find you doing what he has charged you to do? Will he find you treating folk right? Will he find you doing the right thing? Will he find you praying? Will he find you attending worship service? Will he find you giving of your tithes and offering? Will he find you treating people right, treating the unsaved right as well as the saved right? Will he find you doing? Or will he find you giving favoritism to those who you like? Wow. You see, some people, when they pray, they only pray for their family members. Mm -hmm. Some people, when they pray, they only pray for folk they like. Jesus says, bless your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. 
Will God find you serving and will he find you serving well and faithful? It says, when he comes, we'll find you so doing. We'll find you doing the right things. He, he transitions from the end time to focusing on the local church. You know, the church can really tear some people apart. The church can really be badly, demonstrate bad attitudes toward people. You see some people, when they get a dime over a dollar, they can look down their nose at you. Some people, they've been saved two weeks and they think they're the most holy place. They, they are the most holy person in the world. Some people are so self-righteous until they can't even give food to the hungry. Some people have been saved two weeks. They've been saved two weeks and, and they're on fire for the Lord and, and they've gotten to a point in their lives where they don't do certain things anymore and now they look down at everybody else. The text declares that this servant ought to find themselves doing what the master would have them to do. The phrase used to be asked many times, what would Jesus do? If we read our Bibles, we will find out what Jesus would do in any given situation. And whatever Jesus would do is what we ought to be doing. It's not hard to find out. It's not hard to discover what we ought to do. It, first of all, you ought to do what Jesus does. Yes. Secondly, you ought to read Proverbs every day. There's a Proverbs for every day of the week, and Proverbs will make you wise enough to do the right thing. Thirdly, you ought to sit around some folk that got wisdom, some people that made decisions, some people that have made good decisions and some bad decisions, and therefore, because they made good decisions, they are wise, and because they made bad decisions, they are wise. I just want to let you know, sometimes, sometimes you get to a point in your life where, where you, don't, you don't tell young people how to carry their lives because you're so smart. We are telling young people and we are advising young people how to handle their lives because we've done some dumb things. Yeah, that's right. It's because we've made some mistakes and we don't want you to fall in the same old rut. Yeah, that's right. I oftentimes tell the story of a man driving down... Highway 16, the loop that goes around uh, Houston. This man, he, he drives off. The, the whole road just gives away. At the peak of the elevation, the whole road just collapses. Mm -hmm. He drives off the cliff. He survives. He gets back up. He climbs back up. He stands in the middle of the road, waves his hand, and says, don't go that way. Don't go that way. Don't go that way. There's a hole in the road. Yeah. Don't go that way. There's a hole in the road. He stands in the middle of traffic. He directs traffic and says, turn around. There's a hole in the road. There's a hole in the road. That's what we as adults are doing for young people these days. We've fallen in the hole. We have driven into the hole. We have gotten to a point where we're just driving off cliffs because we made dumb decisions. And it's not because, young people, that adults are so smart that we are able to tell you what to do. It's because we made some dumb decisions and we don't want you to make the same dumb decisions. And it doesn't matter which decision you make, you can find an adult somewhere right in your neighborhood who has made that same dumb decision. Mm -hmm. The problem is when we get adults and we get holy and we act like we've never made any dumb decisions, the faithful one will find himself warning those who are going the wrong way to turn around, make a U-turn, and go the other way. When I look at verse number 47, I see the word assuredly. I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. Mm -hmm. The faithful servant not only have the privilege, not only does he have the position, not only does he have the attitude of protection, but the faithful servant has a promotion. <laughs> Let me just share with you. The faithful servant has been given the position. And this position is a privilege. It's a privilege to have a position for the Lord. Wow. See, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are an usher or you are a deacon. It, it, it's a privilege to work for the Lord. 
It doesn't matter if you're a choir member or, or if you're a servant leader. It's a privilege to work for the Lord. It's an honor to be on top of things for the Lord. It's an honor to serve other men on behalf of the Lord. It's a privilege to walk for the Lord. Yes. It's a privilege. Let me just share with you. It's a privilege to be on top of the ground and the ground's not on top of you. We ought to be every day of our life looking for a way to serve other men and to serve the Lord. It's a privilege. He says because we have the privilege, because we have a position, because we protect others, we will get a promotion. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I'm going to come back later on and talk to you about that promotion as I close. Because, you know, there are some devastating things that come after verse number 47. Mm -hmm. And the preacher ought to give you hope. <laughs> and so I want to come back and talk about that promotion. But the fact of the matter is, God will give us a promotion if we do it the right way. Forget about if your boss promotes you. Forget about it if they keep overlooking you. God is the one that promotes us. The Bible teaches that promotion doesn't come from the east, nor does it come from the west. The promotion comes from God, which is above, who is in heaven. Don't worry about the promotion of men. Don't worry about the fanfare of men. Don't worry about the claps of men. Don't worry about the standing ovation from men. Just know that God has a promotion for you. Amen. And his promotion will be a blessing. Not just to you, but to all mankind. Verse number 48, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse number 48. He moves from a faithful servant to an unfaithful servant. He says in verse number 48, but if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. Let's just look at that. We, we, we go from a servant that is on top of things to a servant that make mockery of Jesus coming back. He says, he says, he says, now I know my master is going to delay his coming. I told a story last week that when mom and daddy said, I want this house to smell like Purex and pine saw when I get back. We used to try to time it, Brother Clark, we used to try to time it right. But you know, when the dust showed up on the road coming down through the field, it was too late. This servant was just like we were at times. This servant would say that my, my master is on a long journey and he's going to delay his coming. He's not coming back right now, so I don't have to be ready I don't have to start preparing right now. It, he says, because of, I've said in my heart that, that, that my, my master is gone on a long journey. He says that, that, that I've said in my heart that my master is delaying his coming. That's how some people are. They're saying that Jesus is really not coming back right now. He's going to delay his coming. Let me share with you, and I shared with you two weeks ago, no man knows the day nor the hour when Jesus will come back. So you have to be ready whenever he comes back. You have to be ready. It says like in the days of Noah, they were giving him and they were celebrating. They were giving in marriage until Noah went into the ark and closed the door. The rain began to fall. The flood came. Then they wanted in, but it was too late. Let me just say to you today, you need to be prepared. Amen. Which servant are you? Which servant are you? Are you the prepared faithful servant? Mm -hmm. Are you the unfaithful servant that think that Jesus is going to delay his coming? Mm -hmm. that, that, that have come to the, to the conclusion that the master is not coming anytime soon. So I still got time to play around. Let's look and see what that servant, verse number 49. Let, look and see what that servant does. This evil servant who has said in his heart, he's made mockery of Jesus coming back. He's made mockery of his master coming back. He says in his heart that he is delaying. Verse 49 says he begins to beat his fellow servants. He begins to beat his fellow servants. He began to beat them and he began to eat and drink with drunkards. 
Oh, Lord, let's, let's look and see. What, let me unpack that because whenever we're given the privilege, whenever we're given the position, whenever we're given the authority to protect, whenever we've been given, looking forward to a promotion, we have to mind how we treat other folk. Yes. Because we have the position, we ought not abuse our authority. This evil servant abuses his authority. He began to beat other servants. This particular text is relevant because during those days, masters and servants were servants, uh, servants were under masters who would beat them sometimes. You see, some masters looked at a slave as a person. Other masters looked at a slave as a piece of property. And those who looked at their slaves as a person, they treated them right. Those who looked at their slaves as a piece of property, they beat it every now and then. It was not advisable for, for masters to beat their slaves because God knows that every person is a person and not property. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and no man is a fifth of a man. No man is a half of a man. Every man is a full-blooded man. And we ought to treat them as such. But because this servant, because this slave was given a privilege, was given authority, he was abus abusive with it. How many people you know that are abusive with their authority? They mistreat people. They, they dog people out. They, they beat people. And maybe they don't beat them physically, but they beat them verbally. How many husbands are, are abusive because they're of their power? Because they, they have found it in the Bible where, where it says that, that I'm the man and you got to follow me. Well, some men are not worth following to the restroom. Some men are not doing what God has called them to do, and therefore God does not anoint you or anoint them to be followed. Just because you got the bigger shoes, just because you are taller, just because you got the, the biggest body and you can tower down over her, do not be abusive of your power. And then when decisions are to be made and you don't want to hear what she has to say, you say, well, I'm the man of the house. Well, if you were the man of the house and you had been doing what men ought to do, we wouldn't be in this position right now. Don't be abusive with your power. Don't be abusive with your authority. Make sure you're loving and kind. Now, let me hit, hit one more time with, 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 with what men quote, what they quote. They want to call your attention to Ephesians chapter 5, where it says the woman ought to submit themselves to the man in the fear of God. And yes, they ought to. But what they have done, they've forgotten about Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 and 22 where it says that we must submit ourselves one to the other in the fear of God. In other words, we have to find ourselves on one accord so neither of us will be abusive to the other. We ought to love our wives. Our wives ought to respect us. Women, let me just share with you, the worst thing you can do to a man is show him disrespect. <laughs> you, you, I mean, if you disrespect them, it's over. <laughs> If you disrespect him, you call him out. If you get loud with him, you, it is over. I mean, he's still there, but on the inside, he's done. Disrespect has caused many relationships to break up. Don't be abusive just because you're the weaker vessel. You can tell him anything you want to tell him, and he be, he'll be able to handle it. Don't be disrespectful. Always respect the man because he demands and he needs respect. So this servant, this evil servant, I don't know if it's a female or male. It doesn't matter because all of us can be disrespectful at times. All of us can overstep our boundaries. All of us can be abusive with our authorities. Yes. He says he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. Now, here it is. He's in charge. He's in control. 
he's beating the servants as if he's the master. He is disrespecting the servants as if he's the master. And then he neglects his duties and go off eat and drink with drunkards. He's partying. He's celebrating. Just like in the days of Noah, they're partying and celebrating, living life of Riley. Verse number 50. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of. Let me just share with you, Jesus is holding us accountable. Judgment will come on a day that we don't look for it. Jesus will return on a, at a period that we won't know about. Jesus says that not even he knows, only the Father in heaven knows when he will return. So we got to be ready. We ought to be ready at a given notice. We got to be ready. We got to be ready because the master of the servant will come at a day when he's not looking for him to return. We may not be looking for him to return at any moment. He can return at any moment. Those of us who are saved, we can be raptured out of here at any moment. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, we are going on to be in heaven. But once we get there, we're going to be judged by the deeds that we've done in this life. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we, we're going to be going to heaven. We're going to be celebrating. We will forever be with the Lord. We don't have to worry about trouble and dying and crying. We don't have to worry about sickness. But I want the rewards that God has for us. There are rewards that he has for us for just doing the right thing. Just working out our salvation. We, we ought to be working out our salvation with fear and trembling. God is going to give us a promotion one day. And I'm looking forward to the promotion. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that promotion one day. I'm looking forward to the promotion one day. Look at verse number 51. It says, still talking about that evil servant. He says, and, and the evil servant will be cut up and will cut him into two. Will cut him in two. Will cut him in two. Will cut him in two and appoint him and appoint him in his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It is simply amazing. It is simply simply amazing that what goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. What you do for others will be done for you. There's going to be a great getting up morning. There's going to be a promotion day. Which servant are you? Are you the evil servant that beat up on fellow servants? Are you the evil servant that, that neglects your responsibility? Are you the even servant, the one that God has saved, the one that God has committed his life for? Are you the even servant that, that will not be faithful to the Lord, but be unfaithful to the Lord and unfaithful to mankind? We have a responsibility. Yes. Our responsibility is to be a watchman on the wall. We must watch. We must fight. We must pray. We must do what God has called us to do. There are too many people getting upset with the pastor when the pastor tells them what the word of God says. You ought to be glad that you've heard and you ought to be busy working. Yes. You ought to be busy doing those things that God has asked for you to do. Which servant are you? Are you the faithful and the wise servant? Are you the unfaithful and the cruel servant? I say to preachers today, don't, 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 don't neglect your responsibilities. I say to pastors today, don't be abusive with your power and your authority. I say to men, women, boys, and girls who are supervisors, managers, who, who are stewards over what God has given us, don't be abusive to what you have because Jesus is coming back and he's coming back to get a church without a spot and wrinkle. Jesus is coming back and he's coming to reward us for the things we've done in this life. 
oftentimes use the butter bean analogy. In our front yard back in the country, we had a rice field in front of the house. We had a bean field behind the house, a blueberry patch behind the house. We had cotton on each side of the house. But one thing I knew, if I put two butter beans in the ground, I'm going to get two stalks of butter beans coming up. That one butter bean bleed, bre breeded a whole stalk of beans. And whatever I put in the ground, that's what came up. When I put two butter beans in the ground, two stalks came up, and every stalk had some hundred beans on it. I want to say to you today, whatever you sow, that what you also reap. Whatever you put in the ground, that is what's going to come up. Let me just say to you today, it's a butter bean mentality. You have to get to a point where you understand as a servant of the Most High God, what you put in the ground is what's going to come up. You ought to be sowing seed in the ground now. You ought to be sowing seed unto godliness now because that's what's going to come up. We're going to be judged one day. My question to you today is, which servant are you? I want to say that I believe I'm the servant who's the faithful servant. I'm the servant who's the wise servant. I'm the servant who have the privilege to serve. I'm the servant that God has given me a position uh, to honor him with. I am the servant that's looking forward to a promotion one day. I'm looking forward to a promotion one day, and it won't be pastoring down here. It won't be preaching down here. I'm looking forward to the promotion one day. One of these old days, Jesus Christ will crack the sky. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And those who remain will be caught up with him in midair. I'm looking forward to the promotion one day. I'm going to be in that promotion that day. I'm going to be in that graduation that day. I'm going to be in the celebration that day. When the trump of God sound, and the trump of God will sound so loud until the dead in Christ will rise. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair. And we will forever be with the Lord. I submit to you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus the Christ, the righteous son of God. Amen. I submit to you righteousness. I submit to you performance based on Jesus. There are too many of us who are born again who is taking this time off from worshiping God, taking this time off from serving God. We've taken this time off from doing righteous things for God. People are beginning to wonder if we're saved or not. There ought not be any wonder. We ought to serve him like never before. For we know not the day nor the hour, Jesus it's coming back again. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. I understand. You messed up. I messed up too. But Jesus is the only one who can fix it. The door is open. If you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your moment. You ought to try him. The door is open. Just try Jesus. You've tried her. You've tried it. you tried him. you tried them. Now try Jesus. And all you have to do is just invite him into your life. Believing that he's the son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. The door is open. Will you come to Jesus? Just trust in him. If you want to get to know Jesus, just repeat after me if you want to invite him into your life. I'm going to bow my head and you bow yours and just trust the story that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, morning he rose from the dead will you trust him today that story and that story alone will get you to heaven will you repeat after me as I pray Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the son of God 
I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you are now born again. We believe that when you die, you're going to heaven. But there are others of you who have not repented of your sins. There are others of you who are saved and know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you're not the faithful servant. I ask you to bow with me today and repent of your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you and that you will work for the Lord and that you will work for him with joy and that you will work with him for him with enthusiasm. Will you bow with me? Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Wash me and make me clean. Motivate me to do your will that I will be doing when you come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. There are others of you who are in between church homes or you don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church to be your church home where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. You can join by inboxing me and I'll send you a form and you can be a member of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to have you and we'll celebrate with you. If you've received Jesus Christ or you've repented of your sins today, inbox me or message me and let me know you did so. And we want to rejoice with you and welcome you to the family of faith. Thank you so much for joining us here today at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Sure My Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. It is now offering time. It is now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. I hear you clapping. I hear you. It's time to give to the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give unto the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord. You can do so by three means. First of all, you can do so by cash out. Our cash tag is cash tag NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls. You can give by way of, of cash tag or cash app, NBC Souls, cash tag NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com, lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com the idea is as Jesus is lifted he will draw all men unto himself or you can mail your offering in to New Beginning Church P.O. Box 503 Missouri City Texas P.O. Box 503 Missouri City Texas 77459 P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 I want to thank you for joining us here today in our worship service and uh, please we look forward to seeing you in our Bible study at 7.20pm on Wednesday every Wednesday for Bible study at 7.20pm also join us at 9am as the men of God break the life the word of life before us at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school period. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today at 1045, and we invite you to join us every Sunday at 1045 for our broadcast. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. We, are, we have on our prayer list today Sister Theta Mason. We're praying for Sister Theta Mason, and we're praying for Sister Doretha Harris. We're praying for them that the Lord would touch and heal, strengthen us as no one else can but the Lord. We want to thank God for, for, honoring, for honoring our prayers. Also, I need you to do three things for me. I need you to do three things for me. Everybody that's listening to me, 
first of all, I need you to go on our New Beginning Church page, our Facebook page, New Beginning Church. It's the New Beginning Church with the, the overhead shot of our building, the, uh, the sky view of our building, our aerial view. I want you to go to that New Beginning Church page and, and like the page and turn on the notifications. Facebook is doing a lot of different things now and we don't want to lose contact with you. So we want you to go to the New Beginning Church Facebook page that shows the, the cross, the shape of our building, that particular New Beginning Church, the shape of our building. Like that page and also turn on your notifications so whenever that page shows up, you will know, know about it. Please, ma'am, I'm asking every person, please, sir, I'm asking every person to like the New Beginning page. If you're visiting, please like the New Beginning page and turn on your notification uh, sign, notification bell, so you will know when we are live and when we are passing out information. Amen. We've had some trouble with the personal pages, so let's get plugged in to the New Beginning Church page. Uh, it shows a, a blue building on the ground, the sky shot of our building, the New Beginning Church building. Also, those of you, we are into a new, we're headed to a new quarter, first of December, for our Sunday school class. I need you to contact me to, to come and pick up your Sunday school books, and you can also pick up communion from me. I need you to contact me to pick up Sunday school books and your communion. We have self-contained communion that you can pick up. You can pick it up for, for a certain period of time, whatever period you want. We have plenty for that. Now, just remember, do not come on Wednesday. I won't be there for you on Wednesday. And the other thing to remember, you need to call me the day before and let me know that you're going to be there. Uh, I would prefer that you don't call me the day of because I may have just left the church. So just do this for me. Call me the day before. So if you're going to meet me tomorrow, call me today and let me know what time we're going to meet tomorrow. And then uh, call me on Tuesday. Let me know what time you're going to be there on Thursday. Amen. Or call me on Wednesday. Let me know when you'll be there on Thursday. Uh, I will not be there for, for these two things, Sunday school books and communion on Wednesday. But any day during the week prior to Sunday, I will be making myself available for you to pick up communion and to pick up your Sunday school books. Amen. Uh, if you have children or youth that need to be in Sunday school, please contact me and I will put you in, in contact with the Sunday school teachers for the children. They are doing Sunday school by way of Kahoot. They're doing Sunday school by way of Kahoot and, and it's a challenging program. Children enjoy it. We want every child, whether you are a member of our church or not, go ahead and participate with us in Sunday school. Amen. I can't hear you. I can't understand you. Come right here. We, we're live. You need to come right here and tell me. Zoom, Zoom Sunday school class for children. Okay, Zoom Sunday school class for children. Uh, please contact me and we'll work out the details. Amen. So we're looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. God bless you and God keep you. John chapter 12, verse 32. Let's go before God. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, that you have created us to be faithful, wise servants. We pray that you bless us as we serve you. Motivate us. Give us enthusiasm to keep serving you. We pray for those who are sick, Sister Harris, Sister Mason, and all those who are going through this virus and other sicknesses. We pray that you bless them, heal them, and keep them. We pray for employment for those who are listening. We pray, Father God, for food. We pray for clothing. We pray for companionship. Lord, we pray for housing. Lord, we pray for our federal government, our local government, state government. We pray, Father God, that you bless the mind of these men and women. We ask you to turn their hearts toward the people they serve, that they will become faithful servants. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. 
all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.